Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. I have the full Elon interview for you from the European Battery Conference. I'm only going to chime in one time to clarify something that he said, but in tomorrow's episode, we'll get into things in a little bit more detail. But for today, just enjoy the interview and I'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you enjoy. And uh, it's an honor to talk to everyone. So the as far as range is concerned, we um, I think have, sh have shown that the range can be uh, very long. In fact, we, we could make it even longer than it is today. Um, but our longest range vehicles have um, a range uh, over 600 kilometers. Um, and, uh, and, and there's, there's more, we could, we could actually do more into that and you'll see actually some, uh, improved versions of our vehicles come out with, uh, over 600 kilometers range starting to approach 700 kilometers. And we even have, uh, some under development long term that can do a thousand kilometers. So the, uh, what, what we see is really the fundamental, uh, impediment to progress with batteries is the cost. So. Um, if you've got, if you've got range, if you've got rapid recharge, um, and, um, and then all, all those can be achieved and, and a, a high calendar and high cycle life. Um, so, you know, batteries can last like 15 years, which I would believe ours currently can. Then the, the, what, what it comes down to most of all is, uh, improving the cost so that the affordability of batteries is, of, of, of battery powered cars, electric vehicles. Um, is improved and so that er everyone can afford to buy an electric car. That's, that's really what we see as the, the, the fundamental thing that needs to be improved. Um, now along the way, with, there, will, will, there will also be, uh, improvements in energy density, which really translates to uh, improvements in range. Um, so in, in pursuit of lower cost, uh, batteries, you, you actually end up try, um, in a lot of cases with improved energy density, which also gets more range. So, um, the long, long term goal would be to try to get to, um, a cost, uh, per kilowatt hour of perhaps around, um, uh, 50 cents or 55 cents at the cell level, uh, for a long range battery cell. Um, and in order to get there, there are a lot of innovations that are necessary. So he did say 50 to 55 cents per kilowatt hour at the cell level. I'm not sure if this was a mistake, but if it was, I don't know what he would have meant. So let me know what you guys think about that comment. Uh, both in the cell design and in the design of the, um, the factory that produces them. So and in fact, there's quite a bit more work in the in building the machine that builds the machine, uh, then in the, the cell itself. So it, one needs to design the cell in the right way. Um, and then, uh, very, the very difficult part, and I can't emphasize this enough, the very difficult part is then scaling up that production and achieving ex extremely high reliability and safety with the cells. So we, it tells us we've put a lot of effort into this over many years. Um, uh, mo mostly internally, but there've also been some key acquisitions that have been instrumental in achieving a low cost per kilowatt hour. Um, and that's, uh, that's what we intend to, uh, build at, uh, the pr prospective gigafactory in uh, Berlin Brandenburg area. Just ask you, uh, in terms of scaling up, uh, what you see as the biggest hurdles to mass production. I think um, the, there, there is the, the very uh, element of scale itself um, in that you, you, we, it's important to achieve economies of scale um, to um, make the, the batteries affordable. So things have to be done at extremely high volume. Um, so that means a very big factory um, and not just one that is big, but also one where the, um, the cycle time through the factory is, is very low. So you, you have fast cycle time. With a big factory is what yields a high output. Um, in order to achieve <clears throat> a, a fast cycle time um, and uh, and a high precision, you need to develop advanced machinery for every aspect of the production system. So this is really everything from how the, the cell can is made uh, to the how the uh, the 
electrode precursors, the cathode and the anode precursors are made. So then making the anode and cathode materials to applying them uh, to uh, the, 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 the conductive conductor. Um, and for this, we have, for example, the, a very special process called the dry electrode deposition, um, which is much better for the environment. It's basically allowing one to put on, uh, to apply the electrode to the conductive ribbon uh, in a way that uh, does not require solvent um, and or, or require bake to, to, to the, the, the normal way these things done is you, 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 you create a slurry of the electrode materials and then uh, you put the, the, this wet slurry on uh, and with a lot of solvent and that solvent is uh, baked away by the ovens. Uh, and and this, this is, this is obviously suboptimal from an environmental standpoint because you have um, so you, you have the gases coming from, this, from the solvent that you have to then get rid of. Um, but uh, with, with dry electrode processing, you, you do not need the, uh, the solvent, you don't need the, the drying ovens, um, and you can apply it directly. Um, this, this maybe sounds simple, but it's really very difficult. Um, and uh, in fact, a lot of the specialized equipment we use for this comes from um, Germany and elsewhere in Europe. So, but, with, but it, does, it doesn't exist. It's being made. It's it's really under design, and 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 you know we're, we're made, we've made them made it now at kind of a, a, um, a bench top level, and we are aiming soon to have it done at a pilot plant level, um, and then the intent for Berlin Brand Brandenburg would be to have it done at at scale. Um, and scale, scale in and of itself comes with a lot of design challenges. Um, that have to, it's a lot of R&D that's going to be done just to solve. Okay, I lied. Two chime-ins. I just want you to know, I think one of the bigger risks or challenges for Tesla for the next two to three years will be making the 4680 cells at scale. As Elon says throughout this interview, there's still a lot of work to be done. It's not a guarantee. And a lot of these processes are still being developed at the pilot level. So going from bench to pilot and then to mass scale production is a big deal. And as he says, it takes a ton of work. So that is one of the bigger risks for Tesla, not for 2021 because they have their battery supply for 2021, but for 2022 and beyond, they need to get these 4680 cells scaled quickly. So that is one of their biggest challenges, IMO. Talk to us a bit, if you would, uh, in general, about your plans for the battery cell plant within the Gigafactory uh, Berlin Brandenburg. As you know, people here very excited about this. So, what more can you tell us? Sure. Um, so, the, 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 we want to go from where, where we have a, a sort of small pilot plant, which is basically proof of concept uh, in uh, California to um, uh, something that, that will actually be, I think, possibly the largest uh, battery cell plant in the world. I, I, I think it will be the largest. Um, it would be capable of over 100 gigawatt hours per year of production, and then possibly over time going to, to uh, 200 or 250 gigawatt hours a year. Pretty confident at that point it would be the largest battery cell plant in the world. Um, and, uh, as I said, a, a lot of processes where we have to, uh, quite radically improve the, the cycle time, um, and where we have to redesign, uh, machinery for continuous flow operation. Um, uh, I, I've, I've said this publicly on many, many occasions that the designing the, uh, the prototype of, of really of any advanced technology, um, it is, I think, relatively easy, uh, and, and then scaling up to high volume production is is very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, there's an old saying: it's like it's one percent inspiration and ninety nine percent perspiration. <laughs> uh, so it's, it, it might be ninety nine point nine in the case of, of battery cells. You, you'll see a lot of announcements of this cell breakthrough or that cell breakthrough, um, this technology breakthrough, and say, okay, well. How, why can't they just make a lot of them? It's because the the scaling up of the production process is much harder than moving something out on a lab bench. So, Great. Um, in, in fact, it might be helpful to provide 
everyone with just just a walkthrough of the Tesla um, pilot plant. And if you see how intense it is, even at the very small pilot plant level, you can imagine how much more it would be at something that is perhaps a hundred times more throughput. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's intense. Uh, <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the inspiration perspiration uh, ratio there. I'll be taking that into some of our future uh, discussions here at the conference when we talk about uh, technology and breakthroughs. Let me ask you yep. this because we've been hearing all morning from the speakers on policy issues that they see sustainability as absolutely key to the European comparative sure. advantage in this area. So you mentioned some sustainability considerations around solvents and slurry and so yes. on. Could you say a little bit more about your view on the environmental impact of battery production and what you're doing at Tesla to take it uh, toward a more sustainable direction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as, as you had, I think the, the dry electrode uh, production process is uh, in, the, in and of itself quite a game changer. It's a fun, fundamental improvement compared to using solvent and then having to dry off the solvent and deal with uh, the, the, the off-gassing from the solvent. That, that for sure is a big one. Um, there are um, some um, proprietary methods by which the, the cathode is produced in the, in the first place where we avoid um, a, a lot of the steps that are that are difficult to deal with environmentally. Um, and one of the things we're doing is we are um, reducing the, for example, the cobalt content. Um, so that avoids like cobalt mining issues. So it would be um, a pure nickel, almost pure nickel uh, anode. Um, and then uh, eliminating like said, a bunch of the steps of processing of the, the nickel electrode, which um, then obviously is good for the environment. Um, we're um, moving to um, a high silicon um, anode, but it's a, it's a silicon anode that where the silicon does not require um, a lot of, it's, it's not energy intense to create the silicon. It's using silicon that is comparable to solar, um, sort of so, solar panels, sort of voltaics, photovoltaics. Um, we also have come up with a means of, of, of uh, um, creating lithium hydroxide uh, without use of uh, sulfuric acid. So it actually uses uh, sodium chloride, essentially table salt, to um, extract the lithium from uh, lithium uh, clay deposits. Um, and, uh, and, that, and then that table salt is able to be uh, reused. So uh, there's, there's, there's really a whole series of steps that are employed to ensure that the uh, environmental impact of the cell production is um, is very clean, um, and that you you could be living right next to the battery cell plant, and you wouldn't even have detectable amounts of of any toxins uh, in in the air. So if you had like an air tester, you wouldn't you would not uh, notice anything literally. Um, and it's it's notable that uh, our pilot plant, that's the um, you know sort of basic proof of concept is located in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is renowned for extreme environmental requirements. So if there was anything that was bad, it's really not possible to do it in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> That will be very good news uh, to those who enjoy the beautiful forest uh, around yes. the Gigafactory uh, yeah. facility. So uh, just a couple more uh, short questions, if I may. Uh, one of them uh, regards uh, a, a long discussion about whether we will ever see electric uh, trucks as being truly viable. Sure. And you started out in your remarks talking about range. Uh, so what's your response to the pessimists who say not going to happen? Well, I think this is really just a fundamental um, calculation of, of you say like what's the energy density of the uh, of the battery of the cell and then of the battery pack and then of the integrated battery pack and truck uh, chassis. Um, so it's a so, so total mass of the uh, of the, the semi truck before you know before including the trailer or anything, and and can you get that? mass down to something which is comparable to existing uh, diesel trucks. 
Um, I think the answer is absolutely yes. And we demonstrated that with uh, prototype trucks. Um, and so uh, getting a range of, uh, let's say, uh, 500 kilometers is, I think, quite easy, like trivial, to be frank, um, for, for a semi truck. Um, and this is assuming a truck that's uh, pulling a load of something on the order of uh, 40 tons, 40 metric tons. Um, so um, just a heavy truck. Uh, and then you can take the range, if you, if you want, for long range trucking uh, up to, we, we think, uh, easily 800 kilometers. And we see a path over time to get to a thousand kilometer range uh, with a heavy duty truck. This is, like I said, truck uh, on the order of 40 metric ton uh, total mass. Um, uh, and uh, we think this is going to be extremely competitive and compelling to uh, the, the trucking companies. Um, and we actually have a few pro prototype semi trucks that are in operation, have been, op been in operation for over a year. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, some keys to that are having, like I said, a, a high um, en energy density cell and then integrating that cell into the pack uh, with a minimum of, um, extra, of extra mass. And then uh, using a, having a structural battery pack where the, the cells and the, and the battery pack actually form part of the core structure. And this is also something that we um, talked about at Battery Day and that we will be, of course, implementing with the semi truck. And the net result is uh, you're able to carry uh, the, the, basically the same cargo as a regular diesel truck. Like this, we think maybe there's a, um, a one ton penalty, maybe, but at this point, we think possibly you can even have less than a one ton uh, payload reduction, uh, and it could long term, I think, be zero payload reduction for, for electric trucks. So, sort of a, you know, in terms of like put, to put numbers on this that are specific, uh, you know, something like um, uh, a, around a 300, um, uh, 300 watt hours per kilogram, something like that. Uh, at the cell level uh, is enough to to get to these the, the high ranges that I talked about, sort of the 800 kilometer range. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. So one last question pertaining uh, to something uh, that you have uh, said uh, publicly that both Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Shanghai will be making original vehicles. Can you just say a yeah. few words uh, about that? Give us a little more detail. Sure. Um, yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, th I think there's there's just a lot of talent, um, talented designers, uh, engineers um, in Europe, of course, and uh, it would I think for a lot of the best people, they really want to work somewhere where they're doing original design work. Um, they don't want to just be, you know, doing say the European version of something that was designed in in California. So I think it's important. For in order to attract the best talent um, to to do original design, um, and I think uh, you know possibly uh, in Europe it would make sense to do um, I guess a compact car, so perhaps a hatchback or something like that, and um, something, something that like well, what do most people want, um, and in, in a given region, um, or what is a very popular approach to take? Um, you know, in the US, U.S., the cars just tend to be bigger for personal taste reasons. Um, and in Europe, the tends to be smaller. Um, and uh, I mean, if, you, if you're trying, if you're trying to, to park in a dense urban environment, having a car that is um, that actually fits, fits in a parking space easily is important. Um, I was driving a Model X around Berlin, and we, we had quite a bit of trouble finding a parking space that we could fit. So um, I think that, you know that would probably be a good candidate for original design. Um, but there, I'm sure there'll be others as well. But I, that, that that might be the wise place to start, um, and it, it helps us also say, okay, we need a car that people can afford, uh, that fits their lifestyle and everything. And so, probably something like that would make sense. Um, yeah, I'm excited about doing some original design in Europe. 
And many people here excited as well. So we will be following with great curiosity and interest uh, the further developments. Elon Musk, thank you so much for joining us. When I, when I calculated the time in California and, uh, you know, figured out <laughs> what hour you must have gotten up at, I thought, uh, you know, has Late. he actually succeeded in bending time or uh, yeah. is it really two in the morning? <laughs> so we really appreciate uh, your sharing your insights with us and now I wish you a very good night and much success in future. Uh, thank you. It's good to talk to everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.